Hey, good morning. It's Aaron Laurie with Plan Free. <laughs> good morning. It's a crisp uh, fall morning here, third week in September, and we're going to go for a walk through Bouchard Gardens in Victoria, Canada. Come along with us. Now smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Start here, the Laurel Walk. Oh, I just want to get this map. Oh, yeah. And the park here is, or the gardens here is dog friendly, as you can see by this sign. It's quite, quite quiet here, but beautiful. We've arrived just past uh, the 9 a.m. opening time. So, well, the crowds are probably still having breakfast and waking up. Beautiful, right? So, there are over there are over one million bedding plants here of over nine hundred varieties, and currently there are fifty full-time gardeners working at cultivating these gardens and there's something in bloom all year round uh, so there's always something to see huge hostas on the grounds might be a little bit late to see the flowers on these guys they may be uh, gone already for the season. You know, like Hosta La Vista, baby. <laughs> to the flowers. Till next year. What are those? Pretty. Just oh. endless flowers here. This is, I would say, easily the most beautiful gardens. We've only been here for two minutes, but probably the easily the most beautiful gardens we've ever seen or walked through. Just every color of plant and flower you can think of. I think if you were to come uh, in spring, early summer and blooming season, uh, you'd probably see even more of an explosion of color, but uh, this is definitely beyond expectations. It's pretty phenomenal. Do you want to go that way? Sure. There's a path and stairs. I'm not sure. Let's check it out. Up steps. Sunken steps to Sunken Garden. Let's do it. Definitely the way you want to go. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Good morning. I don't know if the camera will even pick that up. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they've shaped a little moss shrub thing into a tiger. It's kind of cool. Oh my All right, fun fact. Uh, when uh, Robert Bouchard uh, initially looked at this land, he was a businessman from Ontario and he was first drawn to this land because it had a limestone deposit in it and the first limestone quarry that he would uh, turn into cement and sell in the area is this sunken area you see behind us here and it was a perfect marriage because Jenny Bouchard went ahead and used some of that money that uh, Robert made in industry to go ahead and transform what used to be a quarry into a world-renowned garden that's now become a heritage site, National Historical Site so perfect marriage, the businessman and the visionary gardening woman.
Jenny Bouchard began to shape this magnificent landscape in 1904. She established it in the style of the grand estates of the period, several distinct gardens to evoke a range of aesthetic experiences. An abandoned limestone quarry was transformed into the dramatic sunken garden that we've just walked through, a reflection of the early 20th century beautification movement and an exceptional achievement in Canadian gardening history. Through successive generations of the Bouchard family, this site has retained much of its original design and continues the Victorian tradition of seasonally changing the outstanding floral displays. The barren rock base of the quarry presented Jenny Bouchard with a challenge. She hung in a Buzun's chair, sorry about my pronunciation, to plant ivy in the crevices in the rock walls. I also heard somewhere that, uh, and we might see a sign on a little later, that uh, in the early times she used a uh, horse and cart to carry down the first loads of topsoil uh, from the house up there to what is now the sunken garden. So maybe we'll see a sign on that in a little bit, I'm not sure. Sunken Garden Lake. The deepest part of the quarry floor was sealed and lined and allowed to fill with water from natural spring, forming a lake 40 feet deep in places. Oh my gosh. Mrs. Bouchard stocked the pool with trout, which would rise to the surface to be fed when he clapped his hands. Speaking of uh, Robert clapping his hands, it's a little known fun fact in that um, he actually set a record for one-arm push-ups in uh, 1912. A record that stood for over 40 years. Fountain Lookout. This smaller quarry, quarry was a source of limestone in the 1860s. It was here that Ian Ross, grandson of Mr. and Mrs. Bouchard, devised his spectacular fountain with the assistance of his plumber, Adrian Butler, and his electrician, Vic Dawson. The Ross Fountain commemorated the 60th anniversary of the Bouchard Gardens when it was installed in 1964. Directly behind the Ross Fountain lies Todd Inlet and the site of the Vancouver Portland Cement Company established 1904. Adjacent to the plant at Todd Inlet was a village that housed the employees. Autumn is one of the best times to visit Bouchard. People think spring and summer are really the best and they're very good also. But the colors of the leaves start to change. The maples and the Japanese maples start to change their foliage color. And so you really do get a, a variety and, and cha change of color in the, in the autumn. I found a tiger lily. Hello. Hello. Just every corner is another magical pathway into... Every corner is beautiful again.
Fun fact number two, <laughs> Jenny Bouchart invented sunglasses. <laughs> we have an unbeliever here, but you can uh, add in the comments below whether you think that's true or false. These are Canna. And these, I have no idea. Pretty awesome. Trumpet-like shapes look like they'd be attractive to hummingbirds. As we were walking in this morning, we saw several hummingbirds and other songbirds flitting around. So we'll see if we can spot some of those on our walk today and maybe get a couple of clips if you're interested in that sort of thing. Alright, so we're in the rose garden here and uh, numerous blooms here for mid-September, uh, third, third week of September still. You can see around that there's many beautiful varieties still uh, displaying themselves. No, you gotta stop and smell the roses, am I right?
raven beaver with grouse, otter with pups, and frog. I guess that's uh, the frog on the bottom of the totem pole there. Good luck moving up. Little tucked away path here. I think they call it the organ display. There's a building to my left that would probably house the organs. Uh, musical organs. And the flowers back here in this little out of the way path here are just awesome. So many nooks and crannies in here. They're all just bursting with color. You know, we've been walking around here all morning and it's so visually stunning, it's not even dragging on. I barely saw them. <laughs> Probably take, I'm guessing, six or eight people standing arm to arm to hug around this tree. It's uh, just enormous. Another one on this side. It's just a Coast gigantic redwoods. tree. These are the post redwoods or sequoias. And it says this seedling was planted in 1934. It's very impressive. Oh. It just keeps going up until you lose sight of it. You can't see the top of it. Fountain of Three Sturgeons, once the location of a large Japanese tea house, the view from the fountain is a commanding one of the Bouchart residence across the main lawn. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's nice. Fun fact number six, the uh, Bouchart family imported 13,741 Japanese spiders to go in this uh, Japanese garden display. And if you look closely, you can see a few of them. This is the Japanese garden, much talked about, especially by my wife this morning, who's mentioned the Japanese garden oh, 61 times. So we're going to view it. You can see the Bouchart residence oh, off in the background. What an absolutely sprawling and gorgeous residence. I'm sure there was lots of great family memories created there. And it's special that they've opened up this site for us to enjoy and view.
evening time, and especially Christmas, the gardens here are famous for their light displays. So if you're ever here in the time of year where it gets dark early, especially in the winter, make sure you hang around for the display of lights. They're pretty cool. Okay, fun fact number three. Robert Bouchard could navigate a set of chopsticks almost as well with his feet as he could with his hands. Google it. The Japanese Garden, the first of Jenny Bouchard's formal gardens. Japanese Garden was started in 1906. A Japanese landscape artist, Isaburo Kishida, assisted her with the design. Under the supervision of Hugh Lindsay, the first of Mrs. Bouchard's head gardeners, laborers from the cement works implemented Kishida's plan. Jenny installed a tori gate to mark the entrance to the garden. The magnificent purple beach on each side of the gate and the Japanese maples at the head of the stone stairs down into the garden are the oldest non-native trees in Bouchard Gardens. Star Pond. This pond was designed by Mr. Bouchart for his collection of ducks in 1931. Beyond is the entrance to the Italian garden through the Lawson Cypress Hedge. Fun fact number, what is it, number three, number four? 448. Fun fact number four. Uh, the Bouchard family used to have many activities on the residence here, uh, ranging from tennis, had a tennis court, to croquet, to uh, bowling even, lawn bowling. So, true or false, Google it. The Italian garden is the most formal of Mrs. Bouchard's gardens. 
created in 1926 on the site of the family tennis court, the well-known architect Samuel McClure worked from Mr. Bouchard's ideas to create the garden. You gonna hedge your position? I think we found our first hummingbird of the day. We'll see if we can see if we can film them for you a little bit. Don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's quite a few around. Pretty appropriate to have a little gelateria here, just off to the side of the Italian garden. People ordering some dessert after their walk. Prices of the ice cream here. Five twenty-five for a single, eight ten for a double. We'll see if I can hold myself back. There's no guarantees. All right, well, you can see that um, I successfully turned down the ice cream. No. Wildflower, honey, and lavender flavor. You know, everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite flavor. I'm salivating all over the place. It's delicious. What do you think? You guys taste that? That is really nice though. Very lightly flavored. Mrs. Bouchard's private garden was designed by Samuel McClear and built to her specifications and to this day is maintained as it was during her lifetime. It is the only area of the gardens that has never been open to the public. The gracious tea house is often furnished with items of memorabilia from the family. A fishing rod, gardening hat and such. coming out. They're playing all coy. My name's Aaron Miller and this is Plan Free. If you like the video, press the like button and subscribe. Hit the blue bell icon to always be notified when we're coming out with the next video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.